In this video, I want you to understand the backlight section of a mobile PCB. So this video will be a very detailed video. Make sure you stay tuned because the video won't be long. So I want you to understand the different types of input in a backlight section of a mobile PCB. So depending on the mobile PCB, there are some mobile PCBs with different input source of the backlight section. So for example, if you look at this PCB right here, so you will see that we normally have our bag light section right here in which I have made a lot of videos showing how you can identify all these sections. So we are going to talk about the input, different types of input, the output and the signals of a bag light section of a mobile PCB so that you can be able to troubleshoot bag light problems very easily. Okay, so when we are talking about inputs, if you check right here, you will see that this coil right here gets the input voltage of this backlight IC right here. So you can see that we have the, the diode, which is the diode of the backlight IC. The diode gets the output in this marked side, then gets the input in the reverse side right here, which is not marked. You understand? So make sure you, you take a look at my mouse pointer right there. And both sides of the coil gets the input. So that is why if you are having backlight problem, you have to check see if this coil is passing through in bosom mode because this coil is supposed to get the input in this side then transfer it to the other side to enter the other side of this backlight IC. So talking about the different types of input. So if you check right here, you will see that we have the VSYS pin, the VSYS input for this backlight section of this phone, which is not the same in all phones. So this VSYS input is only if the phone has this type of charging IC, this charging IC with a lot of pins right there. So if the if the charging IC is the six six pin IC, then you just need to forget that the input of the backlight IC is coming out from that IC. You understand? So let me show it on this PCB so that you will understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are the type of charging ICs that I'm talking about. When you see this type of charging ICs in which I have a video on how you can identify this, like I said, you will see that you can check the videos in the comment section in case you don't understand how you can identify this. Okay, so like I was saying, if you see this type of charging IC on any mobile PCB, you need to understand that the bigger coil, there is always a big coil beside that charging IC and this big coil is the VSYS or the VPH that gets the VPH uh, voltage or the VSYS pin that is going to the bag light section. You understand? So once you see this type of charging IC, you need to know that and you are having bag light problem in that phone, you just have to know that you need to start checking the input of that bag light IC from here, from this coil right here. So we have the VSYS, if you see it in a mobile PCB using schematic diagrams. If you see that the input of the backlight IC is from the VSYS, you have to have in mind that that input is from the charging IC. And if you see that it's from the VPH, you have to know that it's from the charging IC. Again, like I said, but if you see that it's from the V part using your schematic diagram, you need to know that it's coming directly from the battery positive pin. I hope you are listening to the difference. If you see that it's from the V part, you need to know that it's from the battery connector positive pin. But if you see that it's from the V part PMU or PWR, you need to understand that the input of that bag light section is from the power manager IC. It's from the power manager IC, but still a standby voltage, which means that as soon as you connect your battery, then you will get 3.5 volt. In the input of that backlight IC or you will get 3.7 volt depending on the the standby voltage of the battery you understand so we have talked about the input right here let me give you a quick explanations about the other outputs okay so we always have the input which always passes through both sides of this coil and in the reverse section of this diode right here as you can see so make sure you are taking a close look right here so this is the input then we have what we call DISP pin. This DISP pin is the brightness signal pin, which is from the CPU. It's always in between the two inputs. As you can see right here, it's always in between the two inputs 
of the backlight IC. So without this pin, the backlight IC won't be able to light up to boost up the voltage that you will get in the output of this diode. And this pin is from the CPU. So when you switch on the phone, the CPU sends a little amount of voltage through this pin so that the IC just act like a transistor so that the IC will switch on and start giving its output voltage. So let me just follow this line right here so that you will see what I'm talking about. So this is the DISP pin. So if I follow it, call, you will see that it's coming from the CPU right here. So once you have switch on the phone, the CPU will give signal to this backlight IC that yeah, you need to switch on, you need to send this output. And when you are controlling the brightness of your phone, pushing it up, the CPU gives command to this backlight IC to increase the output voltage in this diode or to decrease depending on if you push down the brightness of the phone or you push it up. So you see right here we have the output on this other side which is always the max side on any backlight IC. You understand? So if you see any backlight circuit then you see this diode. You need to know that the max side is supposed to be the side that will get that high output. You understand? So if you check this other pin right here, we have two outputs on any backlight IC. It's not the positive and the negative. We have the backlight positive then we have the backlight negative so this negative is different from gnd it's just like a, a transformer voltage that is not being regulated you understand so it doesn't really have like a positive and a negative which the negatives like gnd it has a voltage positive and a voltage negative that is why instead of just connecting the positive which is the positive from this other side of this diode then connecting the other side to the gnd they connect the positive right here then still have the negative out of the charging IC which is connected to this pin. You understand what I'm talking about? So then in some phones you will have only these two pins right here. In some phones you will have only these two pins. But if you use schematic diagram and you see that we have three inputs from the backlight section to the screen connector, you need to understand that this type of phone, the screen needs to be connected before you can get an output voltage right here which is because of this pin this pin is like a signal pin which is connected to this disp pin through a high value resistor which is a kilo ohm resistor so when the screen is connected this disp pin will know that this screen is connected and will have something to do with the signal that will switch on the backlight ic right here so i hope you do understand that and I know this is not all that you will need to understand, but this is just the basics of understanding this. So in case you want to learn everything about mobile repairing in just a short time, make sure you send me a message using this number on the screen right here so that I will give you more information about my online course in which you can learn the basics of troubleshooting to the professional level of troubleshooting mobile phone faults in just a short time. So thank you.